I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And over the years, I have dreamed of having more options for sparkle in our yarn beyond silver and gold. Gold Selena it still isn't very common, but there are some colorways you can find with that gold sparkle. However, today we have a very unique skein of bear yarn that actually has bronze sparkle. Sheila's bronze from Wool to Die For is 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 10% Stellina. Now, this bronze fiber does have a sparkle to it. It is just super, super subtle, especially if we're gonna compare it to the sparkle of something like Stroll Glimmer, which has a similar proportion, but it's 70% fine superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, 5% Stellina. If we look at the two side by side under my kitchen lights, you can see more of that sparkle from the Stroll Glimmer than we do from the Sheila's Bronze. However, if I do bring in a direct light, uh, like say the flashlight on my phone, I think you can maybe see a little bit of the bronze sparkle on camera. You see a lot more of it in person. I'm just not sure how much it's coming through. Anyway, today we're gonna dye all this yarn side by side and see how we feel about the different sparkle colorways. One thing about the bronze fibers that's really unique is that it is dark in tone. And so, goodness, it would be really fun to do it with like a light or bright color to like really see that contrast. But it would also be fun to do with a deeper color because sometimes the silver sparkle can make yarn feel lighter than it is. So I'm not entirely sure the technique that we want to do, but maybe we should do dip dyeing so we can see a higher depth of shade and a lower depth of shade on the same yarn. But now I'm gonna go ahead and pre-soak all of the yarn in some plain tap water for a couple of hours. Today I have a little off-camera assistant. Why do from cabinets? Who helped me pick out the colors for today. And Ryder requested that we play with some greens. So I have some oldish stock solutions of moss green and spearmint breeze and I thought it'd be fun to combine them a little bit. So we have maybe oh, 25 or so milliliters of a 1% stock solution of moss green and I'm going to shake this up and then let's go ahead and do goodness let's see we're going to dip dye 200 grams of yarn we can go ahead and use all of the Spearmint Breeze as well. So we have 150 milliliters of dye total. This is not gonna make the color that dark, but we may have a mixture still between deep and bright, and so I'm excited to see how the bronze will show up. And I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out both of these bottles into our dye bath. You can tell which so, this one is moss green. This is moss green. Yes, dear. In this dye bath, I started with 16 cups of water and now I'm going to bring over this dye that we just mixed. I have a feeling this will be a nice brighter green. And I'm going to rinse out both the container where I mixed the colors and the stock solution bottles. How are we doing know which color this green will turn out to be? Well, we don't know exactly what color it will turn out to be um, until we actually dye the yarn. Wait. And the remnant that I mixed from our stock solution bottles is looking a lot more grass green, which if you think about it makes sense if we take the more yellow moss green and add it to a very blue green that is Spearmint Breeze. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna let this continue to heat up, uh, but we should add some acid. I am gonna start with three tablespoons of white vinegar. We may end up seeing some breaking, um, some of the color separating as we do the dip dyeing, but we'll see once we get started there. So once this is up at a boil, then we can start our dip dye. The dye bath is nice and hot. I'm actually gonna reduce the heat so that way it's not as vigorous. Uh, I have my tongs on hand and we're gonna bring over our yarn. Is that the sparkling yarn? Yeah. <gasps> now, the bronze yarn skein is a couple inches longer than the Stroll Glimmer, um, but I don't think that's gonna make a huge deal here. So anyway, let's start dip dyeing. Ooh, it's a very pretty green, a very true green that I think hilariously came from a very interesting uh, source from combining two other greens. Yes, Ryder. So, 
I think that that's more of a, of a more more that's more like the color of moss than the Boagro moss green. It looks more like moss than the color of the moss green that yeah. you saw in the bottle. Oh, interesting. Um, I there might be some color breaking here. Moss green. I don't remember if I've tried dip dyeing that to see if it breaks. I'm focusing on having the yarn mostly at the one end so far because I do want to have more color down towards the bottom than we have on the other end, mainly because I want to be able to see if we observe a difference with how that copper color uh, really looks. And right now, um, from standing here, I see a little sparkle down there, but I don't really see the copper color. Um, the silver is standing out a lot more, uh, but we'll zoom into that um, later on. I'm seeing the copper a lot more where we are feeling more pastel, but I think what I want to do now is set this down briefly, and I'm going to add four tablespoons of white vinegar, and I'm doing this to help let these colors bind and set so that way we can really, really end up with a pastel at our lightest end. And so I'm adding all the yarn in now, wiggling the tip to help get it nicely in the pot. I do see some like really deep elements that maybe are like hints of red that must have been in our in our moss color. I don't know if Spearmint Breeze itself breaks or not. Interestingly, it feels like some of the color is binding more to the Stroll Glimmer, but I can't really say for sure. I'm not gonna add all the yarn, and we're gonna heat this for 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes, let's check on our yarn. Our yarn with our Bronze Selena is definitely looking more muted and less bright. There's a hint of some color in the water remaining, not very much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the heat, leave the yarn in here to cool for a while, uh, and then we can remove it, and once the yarn is cooled completely, then we will wash the yarn. Let's wash our super sparkly yarn, which thankfully still looks sparkly, and the water from our dye bath looks clear. When I dyed some fiber, that had Stellina and a lot of different colors in it. The bronze held up where? pretty well, but the bronze there felt a little more sparkly than this one. This one almost feels more like a deep pigment. Let me zoom you in a little bit. I mean, even here, you can see a little bit of the sparkle of the silver, and I think that the, the bronze stands out a little bit. I do see a little bit of some sparkle in it, but again, it's not as sparkly as the silver is. I'm curious, huh. So, so far at the deeper side, the silver strands sort of stand out a little bit more. We'll talk about this when it's dry, but the, ooh, I can see, I don't know if it's picking up on camera, I can see some of the, the bronze sparkle here, but you don't see the bronze filament. Fiber? Filament? Ah! Uh, the yarn is very, very soft, and I think that it is like, it would be a fun way to have something that has a super subtle sparkle to it. So I'm curious about whether I will like it better on the dark part of the yarn or on the more pastel part of the yarn, uh, where I feel like it'll make more of an impact. Because it depends on, like, if you want, with your sparkles, if you want to be able to see that there is that metallic fiber in there from far away, or if you just want to have a little bit of a shimmer. And then that may decide where you want to go with your colors. But anyway, I'm not seeing any color bleeding, which is wonderful. So I am going to go ahead and finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'm going to put all the yarn through my Nina Soft Spin Dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we can finally take a closer look and I'll try to get a lot of images of the sparkle in different kinds of light. When we look at the dry yarn, there is a tone difference between our Sheila's Bronze and our Stroll Glimmer. With the bronze, you can see the bronze fibers going through the yarn. 
It may be subtle in places, but it does make the color overall a little bit less bright and at times feel almost a little more smudged. The silver Stellina is a little visible when the light reflects, but otherwise these fibers disappear a lot more with the pastel color. When we start looking at the more saturated yarn, the silver fibers have more contrast and from standing up I can kind of see them a little bit more. This is in contrast to the bronze Stellina where that deep color blends in with our deeper greens and so I don't see it nearly as much, especially under soft light like we have right now. I attempted to get some footage of our sparkle with either the silver or bronze Stellina in a few different lighting conditions. A direct sunlight outside and sort of the direct lights in my kitchen. And I'm not sure how much the sparkle was picked up in either of the lights. The Silver Selena definitely reflects more light. It feels more sparkly. I can see it if I'm standing and looking in a mirror. I can see the sparkle there. And the sparkle of the bronze is a lot softer and more subtle. The when it does sparkle, it has like a reddish hue to it and it's very, very beautiful. I think that you just need a lot more of it in the yarn for whatever you make with it to feel very sparkly. And so therefore, while I'm so excited to have a different tone of Stellina in yarn, I don't think that this is one that I will necessarily try playing with again, because I think that the bronze tone makes the yarn feel a little bit dingier and at the same time doesn't bring in that sparkle. However, if you would like me to give this another shot, I'd be happy to pick up another sample and maybe we could try dyeing it with a really dark saturated color to see if then it pops and we see that sparkle more. Uh, I have dyed some bronze Stellina in fiber. Uh, that video should be coming up uh, sometime next month. And there it did sparkle and show up more but there was also way, way more of that sparkly fiber uh, present, so it was a little easier to see that shimmer and shine. Maybe it's not fair to say that I don't like it because I think that there are elements to it that are really nice, especially if I'm looking at the deeper green patches. Just on the pastel, I'm not as much of a fan. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I love to play around with different types of dyeing techniques and yarn bases, and if you want to see more, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. I post at least twice a week all year round, and so there's always new content, and you don't want to miss any of it. There are many other ways that you can help support the content here. I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, where I sell a lot of the yarn that I dye in my videos but you can also join to become a channel member and get access to fun badges and Chemnitz emotes that you can use in chat. You can learn more about that by clicking on the join button that is down just below this video. It does make sense that a silver metallic fiber is more reflective than a bronze, just from what I know about metals and things like that. I guess I don't know exactly why, but it does make sense with what I've seen with various types of glitter and things like that. I wonder if there's different colors of Lorax fiber, or if the different colors there are really coatings on top of that silver, and so if you were to then dye it, the color might flake off or something. I don't know. I've always wished that there were many different colors of sparkly fibers in bare yarn that we could play with. and. Really, it comes down to the fact of what has more availability, what would be stable enough through various types of dyeing, whether commercial or hand dyed. And I also know that commercial spinning equipment tends to be very specialized for a particular type of fiber or blend. And so some of those like specialty iridescent fibers may not be able to work in a spinning machine as much as like the silver Stolina. So those are all things that I don't know, but who knows? Uh, we may find more about fun sparkly fibers in the future. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching. 
You can pre-order the 2022 Chemnitz Hanukkah yarn samplers today. Over Hanukkah every night there will be a new yarn dyeing video and these samplers have a wrapped mini skein that you can open up while watching the video to see exactly how it was dyed and then you can swatch and play with the yarn to see how different techniques result in different types of colorways that you can play with. Check out the links in the video description or head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop to learn more.